to investors, it's very important that you have identified correctly the funding stage that your company is at. So when you start on day one, your company is looking for pre-seed funding. So pre-seed, that means before the company has started to develop. And usually that money comes from you or your family or your friends. Uh, and you, you don't necessarily need investors on day one. Now after that you get to the seed funding stage and this is usually the first official equity funding stage. So that's the first point in time where you might look for outside investment. And what you give back to the investors in exchange is, as we spoke last time, equity. So you give, them, you give to them a percentage of the company in exchange for money. So that might start at the seed funding stage. And after the seed funding stage, you move into series A, B, and C. So the reason why these are very important is if you're talking to an investor and you tell them that you're looking for, for example, series A funding, but you're actually at the pre-seed stage or at the seed stage, they might dismiss you very quickly. They might think that you don't know what you're talking about and they might very quickly uh, decide to stop communicating with you. So it's very important to identify the appropriate stage of funding. So with Series A, you're looking to optimize the user base, you're looking to scale the business, you're looking to enter new markets usually. When you get to Series B, usually there's more demand than the company can satisfy. So where while in Series A you're looking to scale the business yourself, in Series B there's already more demand than you can satisfy. And then in Series C you might be looking for additional funding to develop new products and to enter completely new markets or to even acquire other companies. So they are they progress the stages as the company develops uh, from pre-seed to A to B to C and as you can see the amounts of money that you're asking for gets incrementally larger. So these numbers they're from the US market and obviously if you're looking for money in Beijing the numbers would be different so seed a series A might not mean 15 million US dollars, it might mean less according to uh, the market and the habits of investors. So once you go through series A, B, C and potentially D, the company gets to a stage where they're looking for an IPO. Anyone who has an idea what IPO means? Any ideas? Okay, so this is what we call initial public offering. So the first time your company goes on the stock exchange. So the first time the stock of the company starts to be traded publicly, this is the IPO stage of a company. So that's when you get listed on, it could be for example the Shanghai Stock Exchange, the London Stock Exchange, the New York Stock Exchange. This is the, 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 the final stage of business development in terms of uh, raising capital and usually companies tend to raise a lot of capital. At the moment, if you read the news, there is uh, a, a huge uh, Saudi company from Saudi Arabia for oil called Saudi Aramco that is uh, looking to launch an, uh, an, an IPO. And you can uh, look it up later and see what, what they're doing at the moment. So, the funding stages are crucial to understand if you're looking for funding from investors. Now, before you ask for funding, usually you need to have what we call an MVP, or a minimum viable product. 
So that means you have a product which is already at a stage where customers are willing to pay money for it. So it's not just an initial version, it's not a prototype, it's a product that you can start selling, that you can start offering to customers. And uh, usually that might start with a beta program where you're giving it to a few people. It could be for a cheaper price or uh, it could be on preferential terms. So you can monitor their daily usage and you can see how the market responds. Uh, you also need to consider the pricing strategy when you have an MVP and you need to collect user feedback. So when you're collecting user feedback, you're trying to, first of all, quantitatively track data. So for instance, if you're selling something that has to do with electronics or the internet, you might be collecting data or the, on the number of hours that people spend on the platform or the number of hours that they spend using the product. You might be looking at whether they're using it during the daytime or the nighttime. You might be looking at different quantitative stats. So that means different measurable uh, criteria in terms of numbers. Or you might be collecting qualitative feedback. So you might have a focus group, like a table, like the one we have here, and you have someone who is talking to everybody, and they're trying to get feedback from them in terms of personal experiences, in terms of the way that they perceive the product, and this is the qualitative user feedback. So after declaring MVP, it's, it's very important that you start developing the business right away because if you declare MVP but the business is not growing, that leaves a very strange and sometimes bad impression to investors that you're unable to actually get into the market and to actually sell the product. So be very careful when you're declaring that you've reached uh, the MVP stage. But in any case, it's vital that you understand this uh, before you're pitching for investment. So during the pitch, one of the crucial points is when you talk about the team, and if you don't talk about the team, you're gonna get asked about the team. Why? Because a lot of investors invest in people, not just in ideas. So a lot of people have ideas even kids have ideas, everybody has ideas, but in business, the people who succeed are those who manage to actually execute them and to take them on a big scale and to get a big part of the market and to develop them into profitable businesses. So in terms of the founder, they're not just looking at the experience and whether it's relevant, they also look at personal qualities. So they are trying to evaluate whether this person is capable of leading the business, whether this person is capable of leading other people. In terms of team members, they're looking at whether they have expertise in the right areas. So if you're offering, for instance, a product in education, like the classes that we're teaching now, you don't just need someone who knows about education, you need someone who is able to structure the curriculum, so to structure the classes and the content. You need someone who's able to deliver the curriculum. You need someone who understands the market. If you're talking to children who are under 18, you might be considering whether you're talking to the students or to the parents. You might need someone who understands social media and who's promoting everything online. So you need team members in all of the relevant areas that your business is, uh, is, is, is uh, involved in. And also you need to consider whether your team members have any other engagements. So usually what happens at the first day when you start a company? Well, the easiest way to get a team together is to get people that you already know or friends of friends who have relevant expertise. Why? Because on day one you usually can't pay them a full salary because you don't have an initial investment. You're at the you're essentially at the pre-seed funding stage. And at the pre-seed funding stage, you don't have enough money to pay salaries every month. So what happens on day one is you tend to get people who have different engagements. And investors are usually very wary of that. So they're very concerned that other people have 
uh, plenty of other engagements, and they usually look for commitment. And the final point that investors look for is whether the team is able to work together, whether they're in the same location with a lot of the technology projects, a lot of the projects, for instance, recently, uh, in terms of trading currency and new platforms that have emerged, they've been looking at whether the team is in the same location or whether the team has members in relevant locations, so that might be big financial centers in the world, for example. So, when you get to the pitching part, once you have your minimum viable product, you have your team, you have everything that we spoke about last time in terms of mission and vision for your company and, and your financials, obviously. Um, you put all of that content together and you can follow usually the 10, 20, 30 rule. So that means a pitch should have 10 slides, last no more than 20 minutes, and contain no font smaller than 30 points. So that's kind of a rule of thumb uh, usually you need different pitch decks for different purposes, but these are general uh, points that tend to be true for most pitches. When you're presenting to venture capitalists, there are certain traits that tend to be viewed upon favorably. So calmness is one of them, trustworthiness, coachability, and assertiveness. So there is a little bit of a contradiction here. So for instance, if you look at it on the surface, how is somebody coachable but assertive at the same time? Well, this is a balance that you have to find if you're doing business. So you need to be able to take advice on board when necessary, but you also need to be able to judge and make your own decision and to, uh, to basically assume responsibility for it if necessary. So apart from uh, venture capitalists and angel investors, you also have non-conventional types of funding, and that's the last thing we're going to mention in this section. So you have, for instance, crowdfunding, which I'm sure you've, you've seen examples of where companies post their new product and uh, they're explaining their idea. They have maybe a short promotional video and they get people to chip in and to pay maybe $10 each or $100 each or different amounts of money and then they get something in return. It might be an early version of the product, or it might be later, if it's a lot of money, some sort of stock in the company. Um, and crowdfunding is something that tends to bypass investors uh, and, and, and venture capitalists. And it's a, a relatively new phenomenon. You also have the donation method, and you also have pre-ordering, which is uh, in a way, now it's kind of blended with crowdfunding, so you see a lot of platforms where essentially these companies are selling versions of the products in advance, and you, you pay today, but you receive it two months later, or you receive it three months later, because they haven't made it yet. Um, you, you also have an equity-based method with people that can invest small amounts uh, in the early stage of the product or project development, so that's kind of similar to uh, to, to looking for investors, but you don't uh, tend to have as much uh, expectations and as much uh, commitment from these people. 